Okay, let's uh, let's unpack this. Are you old enough to know World of Warcraft? I mean, really know it. Maybe you've got memories of its early days, you know, the kind with those sometimes uh, dodgy quests, maybe clunky mechanics, and that unforgettable epic grind. If you've ever found yourself daydreaming about diving back into that specific classic Azeroth, well, you are definitely not alone. Today, we're taking a deep dive into how that nostalgic itch can actually lead to a seriously cool tech project right in your own home. Mm. It's... uh. It's fascinating, isn't it, that desire to relive a very specific past experience, especially in a digital world like WoW. And what's really intriguing here is how that, that impulse connects to something much bigger, this idea of taking control of your digital world, reclaiming a piece of it. Our sources for this deep dive basically a detailed account from one enthusiast's home lab quest. They really show how you can actually host your very own vanilla WoW server. Right. So our mission today is to pull out the most important sort of nuggets of knowledge from this incredible journey someone took. It's this mix of tech tinkering, uh, deep nostalgia, and yeah, that multiplayer magic. Even if you're playing solo, as you'll find out, you'll hear some surprising facts about how it all works and uh, just enough humor to keep you hooked, even if you've never played a single minute of WoW. Think of it like a masterclass in digital preservation and, well, personal tech empowerment. Okay, so let's get right into it. When we talk about recreating an older version of a game, especially WoW, the big question is, why? Why go to all this, this huge effort? To bring back an old version when there's a modern game right there, updated all the time, what's the pull? That's, yeah, that's the critical question. And the answer, it really goes beyond just, oh, I miss the old days. Mm. If you step back, it really speaks to these core ideas of like digital preservation and personal agency. Yeah. Control, the game companies, they evolve the game, right? Expansions, tweaks, overhauls. And while that's often good, it can fundamentally change or even erase the specific experience that you know really clicked with some players. Right. The thing they actually loved gets changed or just disappears. Exactly. So setting up a private server, it isn't just about playing YW again. It's kind of an act of preserving gaming history, mm -hmm. making sure those unique gameplay loops, maybe a certain class balance or how the community felt back then, that stuff doesn't just vanish. And then there's the control aspect. You host it, you're the architect. No sudden shutdowns, no forced updates you hate, no microtransactions popping up that weren't there originally. It shifts the power. Back to the player, I like that. Being the architect of your own Azeroth, our source, this enthusiast retro hammer, their personal story really lines up with what you're saying. It started with this really powerful yearning, this uh, pull to go back to that specific vanilla WoW W era, which for a lot of people before the first expansion, Burning Crusade, hit. That was like the golden age. Mm -hmm. Slower progression, the world felt huge and genuinely dangerous. Yeah. And you really had to rely on other players. You couldn't just solo everything. So that desire for the pure, untouched experience, that was the big driver for Retro Hammer, something the modern game just couldn't give them. So, okay, they have this dream, resurrect vanilla Azeroth. How do they actually do it? What's the tech involved? It sounds like it involves home labs, and specifically this open source virtualization thing called Proxmox. Exactly, Proxmox. It's built on Debian Linux, lets you run multiple virtual machines or containers on one physical machine. Right. Really efficient. It's like having you know several separate computers running inside one box. Gotcha. So Retrohammer didn't start completely from scratch. No, they used their existing home lab. Powered by a Ryzen 1700 processor. Pretty capable chip. And this shows it's not just about the game, it's about understanding server stuff too. Their setup already had free NAS, that's for network storage, sharing files, and a Plex server for media streaming. But the, uh, the crown jewel, as they called it, was this dedicated Windows 10 virtual machine specifically set up to run the OWW server using a tool called the Single Player Project, or SPP. Okay, SPP, single player project, got it. And what's cool is how they just integrated this big gaming project into their existing complex home lab shows how powerful virtualization can be. Okay, now this is where my mind got a little blown reading through this. Retro Hammer didn't just want an empty server, they wanted it to feel real, so they populated it with, get this, yeah. 1,000 bots. 1,000, it's pretty wild. But these aren't just like statues standing around, right? No. No, not at all. They actively simulate a whole bustling world. These AI characters are out there questing, they're gathering resources, they're using the auction house, even running basic dungeons. So you log into your own private WoW-W, and instead of a ghost town, it feels alive, teeming with players, even though they're all AI. That's incredible. It actually replicates the MMO feel, even if you're playing totally alone. Pretty much, or just with a couple of friends. It's a massive deal for the private server experience. Mm. Makes it feel legitimate. Mm. And the community around these projects is super active. 
They shared links to GitHub projects like SPP Classic, CMenuOS, that's a server emulator, and other versions like Azeroth Core, often with extra bot tweaks. Tons of customization possible. Customization and control, I guess. Oh, yeah. Big time. Server admins get GM tools, Game Master tools. Basically gives you god mode. Spawn any item, teleport anywhere, change stats, orchestrate events. You're the boss. Ma. The supreme overlord of your own digital kingdom. Okay, but what about uh, the practical stuff? Legal bits. You need the actual game, right? Right. That's the slightly tricky part. Hosting the server software itself. Generally okay for personal use. But the game client, the files you download from Blizzard, that's where it gets murky. Technically, you need a legit copy of a specific old version, 3.5a usually, the community. Mm -hmm. Well, let's just say they acknowledge that people often find workarounds or archives to get these old clients. It's a gray area people need to navigate themselves. Okay, noted. So once you have the client sorted. It's surprisingly simple on the technical side. You just tweak one config file, tell your game to connect to your server's IP address instead of Blizzard's, and RetroHammer. They even took it further. Wired up six PCs for a LAN party. No way. Old school LAN party style. That's amazing. Shows it's not just for solo play. Exactly. Bringing back that shared nostalgia, too. Okay, but like any big tech project, especially home labbing, it wasn't all smooth sailing, right? That Ryzen 1700 setup RetroHammer had, it ran into problems, crashes, instability under Proxmox. Yeah, definitely hit some snags. Troubleshooting is just part of the game with home labs. Hmm. RetroHammer talked about these recurring system crashes, often without clear errors, which is super frustrating. But the online community, they jumped right in. Full tech support mode. What kind of things did they suggest? A few key things. Disabling C states in the BIOS was one. Those are CPU power saving modes. Good for saving energy, but sometimes they cause instability, especially with servers running 2147. Another idea was swapping the CPU. Apparently some first gen Ryzen 1700s had known stability quirks in certain setups. Ah, oh, okay. Hard work works. And critically, checking RAM speeds and timings very carefully. First gen Ryzen was famously picky about RAM. RetroHammer actually noticed their Ubuntu VMs were way more stable with RAM at 3000 MHz, but Windows struggled above 2666 MHz on that chip. So it became this whole like crash course in advanced troubleshooting. Lots of trial and error. Wow. Sounds like a real test of patience, but they got through it. They did. Eventually, RetroHammer upgraded the CPU to a Ryzen 2700X, and that basically solved the stability issues. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, you know, despite all the software tweaks, it really is the hardware. Makes sense. So the upgrade fixed it, but that brings up another point people talked about, right? Windows versus Linux for the server VM. Absolutely. That was a big discussion. Why Windows 10 initially? It's kind of resource heavy compared to a lean Linux setup, maybe an LXC container, LXC Linux containers. They're way lighter than full VMs, use fewer resources because they share the main server's kernel. So why didn't RetroHammer use Linux or LXC from the start? They mentioned they were still kind of easing into Linux, learning the ropes. But the great part was the community support. No judgment, just help. People shared Docker builds, those package up applications, nicely recommended server management tools like AMP, shared YouTube guides for YW on Linux. That's cool, supportive community. Yeah, <laughs> really good. And eventually, RetroHammer made the switch. Got the Wild W server running in a Debian LXC container, big win. Freed up a ton of system resources, made everything more efficient. The advice for newcomers was basically, start simple. Maybe don't use pre-built scripts right away. Configure things manually, step by step. You learn more that way. Learn by doing. Makes sense. Okay, but back to those bots. A thousand bots. Performance must have taken a hit, right? How did the system handle that load? Yeah, you'd think so. But surprisingly, it held up okay. Someone asked that exact question. Turns out, even an old dual-core i3 laptop could technically run it, though maybe not smoothly. For comfortable play, a quad-core with maybe 8 gigs of RAM was the recommendation. And obviously, if your hardware is lighter, just drop the bot count. Easy fix. Okay, so manageable. But the really exciting part seems to be the customization this setup allows. Totally. Beyond just performance, people's imaginations went wild. Ideas were flying. Modded quests, maybe something themed around that old hacker corrupted blood incident. Or even boss fights designed for bots to raid. Though they'd probably need to nerf the bosses a bit for the AI. Huh. AI raid guilds. Yeah. And looking further out, people talked about LLM integration large language models. Imagine bots that could actually react like real players, have dynamic conversations, form groups on the fly. Whoa, that would be game changing, truly dynamic AI world. Exactly, we're just scratching the surface there. And RetroHammer wasn't stopping at WoW W, right, right? 
<laughs> plans for Minecraft, maybe RuneScape too. Yep. A home lab bug bites hard. Plans for a Minecraft server and, yeah, talk about tribe of RuneScape servers too. Another classic MMO. The community chipped in again, pointing to Reddit groups like Radmancraft for general server tips, RRSPS for RuneScape specifics. With the usual warnings, you know, watch out for scams in those niche areas. Just shows how these projects grow. Okay, so we've covered the tech, the nostalgia, the troubleshooting, the community. Let's zoom out again. What's the bigger picture here? Why does all this stuff matter beyond just being a cool, geeky project? It's uh, it's fundamentally about control, taking control of your digital experience. Setting up a server like this, yeah, it starts with loving a game, but it's such a practical way to learn really valuable real-world skills. Think about it. Retro Hammer went from YouTube tutorials to mastering virtualization with Proxmox, server management, hardware debugging, Linux versus Windows optimization, even basic networking for that LAN party. Skills that are actually useful in, like, IT jobs. Absolutely. Highly relevant. IT admin, cloud stuff. It all connects. The whole journey just highlights the power of DIY tech. That satisfaction of building something, understanding how it really works. It's collaborative thanks to the community. It's messy sometimes with the troubleshooting. But ultimately, it's incredibly satisfying. It empowers you to manage your own digital space, not just consume what's given to you. What an incredible journey, really. From just missing old WoW to Bobu to deep diving into server tech, fighting hardware issues, leveraging community help, and ending up with this potential for creation and learning. Yeah, it's a fantastic story a real testament to community power curiosity and just the sheer satisfaction of building something yourself mm -hmm. and it leaves you the listener with a question right what kind of world what piece of digital history or what future thing could you build or preserve if you decided to take control of the tech and remember the community's advice don't be scared to break things that's what proxmox snapshots are for easy undos huh Good point. Snapshots are your friend. So if you've got that itch, that desire to build something geeky and awesome, maybe it's nostalgia, maybe it's learning, maybe just curiosity, this kind of project could absolutely be your next weekend adventure. Thanks for joining us on this deep dive.